there guys, Robert here, and welcome to the series premiere of something new on my channel I like to call Rob Geo Ranks. In this series, I rank tracks on an album from worst to best and then explain my overall thoughts and opinions on that album at the end, followed by a rating. For this episode, I'm going to be ranking the new album from Wayward, called Waiting for the World. This is the debut following studio album from the London-based electronic music duo Wayward, a duo that I have looked into a bit thanks to the Juan Kangos review on this new album over here. Also, Wayward credited Burial as their main inspiration for making this album, which is really something I gotta praise them for. And I gotta say, I think this stands behind only Porter Robinson's Nurture as my favorite album of 2021 so far. This album experiments heavily with breakbeat and downtempo music, as well as drum and bass, jungle, and techno, and it works very well to immaculate effect. And now I think I'm ready to start going over the individual tracks and how I place them in my ranking. Before I go over my ranking, I just want to say that this is all my opinion and you can feel free to either agree or disagree with me. This ranking is not based on popularity, but rather on personal enjoyment and nostalgia. Also, please try to not take my opinion too seriously, and if you think your favorite track from this album is not ranked high enough in my ranking, then that's fine too. Just make your own ranking. So now, without any further ado, let's get started. Kicking things off at number 10, we have Casper Part 1. Before I talk about this track, I would like to say that I love every single track on here. There is not one bad or even okay track on this album, so even if I rank this track this low, I still quite enjoy it. That said though, this is my least favorite track on the album because there is nothing too much going on in this track. All it has going for is that sound effect that plays in the beginning that I think kinda sounds like a person panting, and it contrasts well with those beautiful scents that are meant to build up into part 2, I think. While I was listening to this track, I also heard an ethereal high-pitched vocal sample that played a little bit towards the end, which sounds great. So overall, while I think Casper Part 1 is a good track, I really think that the other tracks on this album are better than this track. Still a fun listen though. Next at number 9 I have placed All A Bit Mad. So this is an interesting track and also one of the more breakbeat tracks on the album. It's interesting because the sound effect that plays through more than 90% of this track is the sound of a crowd clapping and cheering. And there is also like some sort of an MC that kinda hypes the people up in most parts of the track as well. I can tell because in one part he's like, are you ready for that? And then the crowd cheers a bit louder. The breakbeats in this track remind me a little bit of The Prodigy, specifically their debut album from 1992, Experience. And the chord progression, synth textures, and that little synth lead that appears in the middle of the track remind me a bit more of tracks from that album quite a bit. I also like how siren sounds get incorporated in this track as well to give it more of that club flair, I guess. It's placed at this spot though because the crowd cheering sound effects can be slightly annoying at times, but otherwise this is a, this is a great breakbeat track that's worth listening to. I love this one. Next, at number 8, we have Back to the Old Days, and now we move on to the techno stuff on here. Well, the first half of this track, that is. I really love the production on this thing. It's very clean, and I do love that metallic-ish percussion in particular. It really does a great job contrasting well with the synth textures in the beginning, especially that kick drum. That kick drum really adds more punch to this, I swear. It makes me feel like I'm in an underground nightclub. It also has this interesting vocal sample about a guy thinking back to the old days, as it were. And then in the second half, it really switches up. Like, it goes from the techno half to the breakbeat half ridiculously well. The breakbeats on the second half surprisingly don't feel out of place on this track at all. Also, for some reason, the breakbeat half of this track kinda reminds me of a more groovy and slowed down version of a Venetian snares track. I don't know why that is, but parts of this section really remind me of that. So overall, this track is really dope, and I really recommend just giving this track a listen. Also, go watch the music video for that track too, it's really cool. Next, at number 7, we have Rich Road. This track is freaking great, and I love the breakbeats on this one as well. I also love how these high, beautiful pads fade in. Like, it's amazing! There's also a catchy piano melody in this track that really does a phenomenal job at contrasting well with these pads. The bass is really catchy too, and I also really love that bleepy synth and the female vocal sample that plays every once in a while on this track as well. It really adds to it, I swear. Therefore, even though I surprisingly did not have anything too much to say about this track, I still think it is a really phenomenal track. The melodies on this track are beautiful, and it does a really great job providing a bit of a warm climate here. Next, at number 6, we have Waiting for the World. And now we encounter the title track, and also a really great opener and tone setter on this album. I really love those pads that play in the beginning as well as that pixelated synth lead that goes along with those pads extremely well. I'm also really loving that drum pattern on this thing as well, and that bass kinda reminds me of a track from Apex Twin's Selected Ambient Works 85-92, specifically Green Calcs. 
There is also a really phenomenal vocal sample that plays somewhere near the middle of this track. At the 315 mark, it kind of breaks down, and then we're left with those warm-esque pads contrasting well with that really fantastic vocal sample. Like, whoever sang on that track is really talented, I swear. And then we also got this under other sample about a girl talking about how she didn't have the time to see this person in Miami or something. I love the way the track ends too, where we get these warm pads that end in the fade out as well. So overall, Waiting for the World is a really great track on this album, and once again, I recommend it. Next, at number 5, we have Bright. And now we move on from the opener of the album to the closer of the album on this list. Like seriously, what a beautiful ending to this album right here. It opens up with these violin sections contrasting well with those soothing nature sounds. And then about a minute and a half then we get this really nice piano-ish melody and that really dope beat that gives it kind of a lo-fi feel to it. Two and a half minutes in we get this really cool sub bass and then about three minutes in we get this piano melody which contrasts well with the nature sounds again and that really echoey vocal sample which in turn makes this track feel really really warm. The 415 mark is where the track really starts to end and we return to the violin section that appeared at the beginning of this track and it contrasts well with the piano melody. Just what a fitting end to already my second favorite album of the year so far. I really recommend this one too because this one really has a strong sense of resonance. Next at number 4 we have Casper Part 2. Next on my list is where the true meat of Casper lies. In part 1 we got those pads that gradually build up into part 2. And now part 2 really expands on part 1 in the form of yet another breakbeat track. I mean all two part tracks allow the second part to expand on the first part most of the time but whatever. Anyways, this is my favorite of breakbeat tracks on here for sure. I really love how groovy the synth patterns sound now, especially in the beginning. And then things get real in the 30 second mark where we get arguably the greatest breakbeat section on the entire album in my opinion. Also I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The vocal sample on this track is awesome. A minute and a half in we get this bleepy slash whistly synth lead, which sounds awesome as always. I also really love that chord progression that happens near the 2 minute mark as well. The other vocal sample that sounds like the guy is singing Waiting for the Stars or something like that is really cool too. I got nothing else to say about this track though, but it's a track that really is an expert track at incorporating vocal samples while simultaneously providing a really warm atmosphere in return I suppose. Fantastic track to be sure. Next at number 3 we have Jill. Up next we have the track that feels like an extended interlude, but I'm honestly shocked at how much resonance this track had on me with just one listen and yet it's only under 2 minutes long. Like seriously, this one really hit me very nicely here. These ambient passages are absolutely beautiful, breathtaking, and atmospheric, and again, the vocal sample, just excellent. And then towards the end of this track, we get these piano chords contrasting with this high-pitched vocal sample, and it's absolutely gut-wrenching and heartbreaking in this part to me. Seriously, go listen to this track, and you'll see what I mean. It may be only the shortest track at a little under 2 minutes, but its strong sense of emotion is unreal. And that is what made this track sneak into my top 3. Next, at number 2, we have Canvey Island. This track is awesome. Like, really, really, really awesome. This track opens up with these xylophones to give this track more of a tropical flair. A minute and a half in, that kick drum comes in and it's really dope. The percussion also slaps across the board from the hi-hats to everything. It also contains both singing vocal samples and breathing vocal samples, and the breathing vocal samples are not really that creepy in the context of a warm album like this. In fact, the breathing sounds sound relaxed and refreshed. Overall, I think this track is really enjoyable from front to back, and I really recommend this one if you really want some strong tropical island vibes here. And finally, at number 1, I have placed 33. I'm kind of flipping the coin on whether or not this is an obvious pick, but this track is seriously phenomenal. I really love those warm pads that happen in the beginning of this track, and it works really well when they contrast with that beautiful piano melody in that same part. About 30 seconds in, we get this really awesome house beat, and there's also a trumpet part thrown in there for good measure as well. About over a minute in, we get this really cool pixelated synth lead that definitely does not feel out of place on this track at all. Two and a half minutes in, we get this really cool riffy piano lead that contrasts well with another echoey vocal sample and some more really warm pads. 
I also got nothing too much to say about this track either, but it's overall a track that does a really phenomenal job at demonstrating the very finest of down tempo stuff in my opinion, and also does a really fantastic job at giving me so much city vibes. So yeah, that was Waiting for the World, and again, this seriously has to be one of my favorite albums of the year, point blank period. It may not be the best album I've ever heard in my life, but just the way that these tracks created such a warm atmosphere is what made this album become the second best album 2021 had to offer overall, in my opinion. Tracks like 33 and Canvey Island are seriously among the biggest highlights this album had to offer, and tracks like Jill and Bright really hit me very nicely over here. And considering that this is Wayward's debut full-length album, that is a promising sign for their career from this point forward. I am really looking forward to what they release next, and hopefully they release something that is almost as good as this album, because this one was truly something special. This one is really freaking underrated as all hell, and I'm overall feeling a solid 9 out of 10 on this album. Just go listen to this. So what do you think about Waiting for the World? If you have any thoughts about it, then I suggest leaving it down in the comment section down below. The Bandcamp link to this album will also be linked in the description down below if you want to give this album a listen. If you have any albums you want me to rank next, feel free to leave your suggestions and recommendations in the comments. I'm really unsure as to how often I would do more of these, but let's just hope I have the mental capacity to do more of these, and you know, I have faith in this series, and you know, this is something new on my channel, and you know, I really hope you guys, you know, enjoy more of these rankings that I do in the future. Uh, and also be sure to like this video, share it with your friends if you want to, and leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe as we're on the road to 6,000 subscribers. That's pretty much it guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye guys.